Now, over the past few years, the Metal API has been proven to be quite a robust gaming platform on Mac OS. Thanks to excellent translation tools, as well as better native support for games, you can now really play a massive library of games with little to no compromises on the Mac OS platform. Now we have the new M5 chip, and what we want to do is actually go through a couple of games that we play on a consistent basis and see what the performance is like. We're also going to be testing out the M5 compared to the previous generation M4, M4 Pro, and M4 Max. Now, there's not a lot of variants on the M5 chips right now. It's pretty much exclusively available on the MacBook Pro in a base M5 configuration, which is a 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU. We actually have the base model, which comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM, as well as 512 gigabytes of SSD storage for $15.99. Now, for a while, we've been testing out the previous generation M4 chips, including the one found on the base model Mac Mini, the M4 Pro chip found on the previous generation MacBook Pro, as well as the M4 Max chip found on the Mac Studio. So on some of the benchmarks, we are going to be doing a direct comparison of the M5 compared to those M4 chips. Now, before we get into the actual gaming and graphics performance tests, let's take a look at actually the CPU performance on all four of these chips, starting with everyone's favorite, a Geekbench. Now, now, you're taking a look at the single core and multi core performance from pretty much best to worst. As you can see, the single core performance has actually greatly improved on the M5 processor compared to the previous generation M4s. We're getting 4,200 points, which is actually the best in the lineup. But in terms of single core performance, it slots in between the previous generation M4 and M4 Pro chip. And uh, certainly the M4 Max is going to be faster in terms of the multi-core performance, not only because it's higher clock speeds, but it also has more threads and cores to play with. If we move on to Cinebench 2024, you're also going to notice pretty much a similar trend. Excellent single threaded performance on the M5 is getting the best overall results, pretty much the same as the M4 Max chip. And in terms of single core performance, again, uh, slots in between the previous generation M4 and M4 Pro, but not much far behind. Uh, certainly very nice to see this little performance bump from the new generation of processor. Now coming back to the Geekbench Metal GPU benchmark where we can isolate the Metal GPU performance, you can see that we have a very similar results as the CPU performance where the M5 chip is just getting around 72,000 points, uh, quite a significant uh, bump up from the standard M4 chip that got 57,000 points, not as fast as the previous generation M4 Pro chip that got over 100,000 points and not as fast as the M4 Max chip that got over 150. 50,000 points. Another standard benchmark that we like to use is Unigen's Valley benchmark. This is an open GL test, which is not really uh, relevant these days. Most games are not running with open GL protocol, but just to keep things at a living playing field, we can uh, actually test out the 4K ultra detailed performance on all of these systems. And uh, the M5 is certainly handling uh, the open GL rendering a lot better at 33 average frames per second versus 21 average frames per second on the previous generation M4 chip. The M4 Pro is getting slightly better performance at 37 FPS and the M4 Max chip is getting 68.3 average frames per second at 4K. Now I did also want to do some uh, temperature and noise tests uh, with the M5 MacBook Pro. So I ran the Heaven benchmark for around 30 minutes, just measured uh, kind of uh, the ambient noise right next to the laptop and it got around 38 to 42 decibels fairly quiet you can perceive that there's a little fan running in the laptop but it's really not that big of a deal in terms of thermals in the center point where the keyboard is it does get up to 40 degrees celsius and around the perimeter it's in the mid 30s around the back of the laptop it's also similar in terms of uh, thermals about 40 degrees right in the center where the soc is and mid 30s around the perimeter that can get a little toasty if it's sitting on your lap on a long gaming session things like that but on our table you're really not going to notice that big of a difference and as far as thermal throttling goes we did run uh, the 3d marks wildlife extreme benchmark and got a uh, score around 12,000 points and we ran the stress test as well and the sustainability rating is about 90 
0.4%. That's actually pretty good for a laptop and compared to the iPad Pro that actually has the same processor inside that only scored around 77.4% in terms of sustainability. Definitely a lot better in terms of thermal management. Uh, maybe not good as a proper mini PC or a tower PC, but definitely not bad for a laptop. Now, one of the things we wanted to test out is the native performance of uh, Cyberpunk 2077 that just came out for Mac OS. How does it perform running natively on Mac OS and how does it uh, perform being translated using Crossover 25? If you don't know already, you can actually play many of your favorite Steam and Windows games and directly translate them into the Metal API using tools such as Crossover, which actually uh, don't impact performance all that much and is a great way to really expand the library of games that you can play on Mac OS. So on the native Mac OS version of Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p using the medium texture settings, ray tracing off, frame generation off, we're getting around 59.8 average frames per second on the built-in benchmark and in crossover 25 same overall graphical settings we're getting 56.35 average frames per second in the exact same scenario so you are getting a slight performance bump on the native game but not by much uh, which is nice to see if you are exclusively translating your windows or steam version of the game and playing it directly on the m5 macbook now as far as actual gameplay goes well using those same exact graphics Graphic settings at 1080p, medium details, ray tracing off. We're hovering around a very manageable 60 to 70 frames per second in this section of the game. And you can also see the scores on the standard M4 as well as the other chips. Moving right along to Death Stranding at 1080p with the default graphics settings, we're getting around 70 to 90 FPS in the opening sequence of the game. You can see that the target output is a 1920 by 1080, but it's actually rendering at a, a sub resolution than that. But the overall detail and sharpness and clarity is a fairly manageable and certainly looks pretty good on the laptop display. Perhaps not the best if you output this to a higher resolution monitor, but uh, at this specific setting and resolution, this is quite a playable experience. And below you can see that we have a general frame rate range of uh, the previous generation chips, just so you have a rough idea on how the M5 compares. Moving forward and talking about Stray at 1080p using the high detail settings, we're getting around 50 to 60 frames per second on the opening sequence of the game. A lot better than the previous generation M4 chip that got around 45 to 58 frames per second in a similar situation and uh, a little bit worse than the M4 Pro and M4 Max chips that you can see. Stray doesn't really run at a very high frame rate and it's actually quite difficult to get above 60 frames per second, but uh, certainly again not a bad experience on the m5 now we'll let's talk about some steam games that are natively compatible with mac os first let's talk about counter strike 2 which on the surface looks like it's uh, performing very similar to the previous generation m4 chip with the dust 2 map uh, in training mode with bots is running around 90 to 120 average frames per second in 1080p with high detail settings and counter strike really runs quite well on mac os and this is certainly no exception on the m5 chip you also see the performance of the m4 pro and m4 max chips respectively in contrast a game that's kind of a struggle to run on mac os has always been everspace 2 in the previous generation m4 chip it got around 35 to 40 frames per second kind of hovering in that zone and the m5 is pretty much very similar in terms of perceivable experience this is kind of an action paced game so it'd been nice to see a higher playable frame rate but uh just for whatever reason this game is not optimized for mac os even though it's fully compatible and it's quite difficult to get high playable frame rates even if you have an m4 max chip by contrast metro exodus runs great 60 to 80 frames per second on the first sequence of the game on the m5 chip a little bit better than the previous generation m4 chip and uh, closer to the m4 pro version but uh, still not as fast and certainly not as fast as the max version of the m4 now let's translate some games using crossover and play some games directly from my Windows Steam library. First thing is we're going to take a look at Ghost Runner 2 at 1080p 
high detail setting. We're getting around 50 to 60 frames per second within the first level of the game. That's certainly a big improvement from the previous generation that got around 45 to 60 frames per second in a similar experience. Redout 2 is great for testing out stutter in the translation process since it's a high pace anti-gravity racing game and we're getting around 70 to 80 frames per second on average which is definitely nice to see there are some lows here and there but definitely runs fairly smooth uh, similar to the previous generation m4 chip that ran this game great as well skate story is a cool indie game that i've been testing out recently and it ran about 60 average frames per second and with a low of 40s roughly uh, certainly not optimized for mac os and is being translated adequately and the performance is certainly playable as well on the m5 now directx or vulcan translation isn't always a smooth process and you will find certain games that just plain won't run or won't run properly for example the game godbreakers has missing assets both in the environment as well as enemies and uh, you can certainly tweak some settings here and there as well as try some other translation methods uh, maybe turn on msync or a disable or enable Vulcan translation that might resolve some of these issues but straight out of the gate uh, some games do have these issues regardless and it's not quite as a smooth of a process however for every one out of ten games that give you an issue there are more than enough games within the Windows Steam library that run pretty much flawlessly one of my favorite uh, modern day fighting games Street Fighter 5 runs pretty much pitch perfect at 60 frames per second across the board with max detail settings and it's an awesome experience to play on the macbook lastly in terms of emulation we tested out the rio jinx emulator which is great for playing switch games on mac os and it ran great just like the m4 super mario wonder runs a pretty consistent 60 frames per second there are some stutterings from time to time but generally a very nice playable experience and the same thing goes for mario kart 8 certainly not going to be as smooth and as flawless as a real nintendo switch but definitely not bad for an emulator and running fairly well and fairly consistently on the m5 chip same thing goes with a prince of persia lost crown pretty much the same experience across the board and even 60 frames per second now is the m5 a viable game Gaming platform I would say definitely yes uh, in most situations that you're gonna come across as long as your resolution isn't too high and not messing with ray tracing is certainly a very capable gaming laptop and could even give uh, dedicated windows gaming laptops a good run for their money now if you guys haven't checked out our comparison directly against the ipad pro with the m5 chip definitely check out that video but in the meantime i want to thank you guys so much for watching if you have any specific questions let me know in the comment section down below and please make sure to like the video if you haven't done so already thank you again and we'll see you real soon in the next one take care